November 2nd, 2019, and the time is now 4.35 p.m. I did a live stream today out in the park by the pier, and I still feel kind of edgy in spirit. I felt a little edgy now, actually, so I want to be up front. See, this is all, again, part of my spiritual awakening, growth, and self-examination. And I share these things on my channel because, see, I know I'm not the only one that feels a certain way about things or have these experiences, but it's really shared to help others, the listener of my channel, the viewer of my channel, to help them go into retrospect self-examination for their own personal awareness and enlightenment. I'm really edgy right now. And again, I felt edgy for a couple of weeks now. I mean, overall, I'm okay. But I want to share with you about my feelings towards something. I'm not going to be giving names or anything like that, but just to share with you how I feel and how things are revisited over and over again and people's, people don't change. Human nature doesn't change. Okay, let me begin. Now, how to begin now? Well, I well I, I I want to talk about two things. I want to talk about how sometimes when individuals get an opportunity, they forget about those people who help them get to where they are. Not that. Not that I was a key person, not at all. But what could happen to individuals when they start to move up the ladder, the social ladder, the uh, social media ladder, you know, from the new kid on the block to the big man on campus, so to speak. And then you get a surprise when this person um, starts to feel that maybe you're too big for them. I mean, that they are too big for you. Now, I was to uh, talk to a person. I've talked to them before. They're a nice individual. Very nice individual. And I was taught growing up, because of my experiences, to always be upfront. So there's no surprises. You know, you have tons of women, they lie about their age, they lie about, uh, about children, that they have kids, but they tell people they don't have kids. I, I believe in being, you know, about disclosure. You know, because see, truth, catches up to you, you know, when you lie, or I should say a lie catches up with you. And that, so rather than lying or pretending to be something that you're not, just be upfront with people. And it's their choice, the listener, whether they want to stay or go. 
you know? So I feel with my journey and my channel to share what's on my heart, to be upfront, to not try to make people think I, I was born with a, a, a gold spoon. Far from it. And so the more I share about myself, the more I feel like, you know, sharing to me is very important. Very important. Sharing is almost showing that you care, uh, that you love other people, that you're willing to share. See, many people don't want to share. They want to receive, but they don't want to share or give. And so those people who share, they're actually putting themselves in a vulnerable position. The vulnerability because now you disclosed a little something about yourself. And I notice now in modern society that people don't want to share. They're afraid of sharing because it's going to put them vulnerable. And people walk around maybe with a facade. And they want to create an illusion. An illusion about maybe where they come from. I'm finding now in, in social media, you have people who pretend. And I, and I mentioned in the live stream that I did today, you have people who deceive others about their origins, about who and what they are. And this is supposed to be tolerated and encouraged in some. So I'm tired of that because, see, when you say things about yourself that's not true, it eventually will come out that it's, it's not true. So just be upfront or just don't say anything at all. Okay? And this, is, this promotes freedom, actually for the individual. And isn't life really all about freedom, about peace? So for me, being upfront with others who I interact with is very important to me to help achieve this sense of peace and freedom. And yes, there's always a, a price to pay when you are upfront with the individuals because some people don't like to hear the truth. They run away from it. But see, that, that's the price you have to pay. But I'm willing to pay that price. But you know, I'm human. And being human, sometimes your feelings get hurt. So I spoke to someone before. And it was successful. I, it was a great experience, and when I contacted this individual, I told the person about my background. I shared with them about my channel, and before they say yes or no, that they, as an individual, has a choice to say yes, I like to discuss you know, to talk to you or no. The person decided to say yes. And I was very excited. See, I'm on my spiritual journey and I'm looking for answers. And my talking to people, interviewing people, is also a means of trying to understand, hey, is this what happened to me? So I want to find truth about myself by sometimes talking to other individuals to help bring in clarity to my life, to help bring me into more freedoms, fulfillment in my life. And this was shared with this person. I talked to this individual some months ago, some, some time over a year ago, and everything went well. 
and then I talked to this person again and everything seemed okay. And then uh, towards the end of the conversation, this person seemed to get flustered or, go, or like or agitated. And I didn't understand what was going on. And I talked about that something was, you know, I, that basically what, I'm, what I was saying was that, hey, I'm not, I'm not like, I, I don't have like a lot of discussions with other people on the topic. I'm not a professional interviewer at all. And I don't pretend to be one. And they, they know about my channel. And the person then declined. And I felt in my spirit that what was being told to me wasn't really being honest as to why. It was an excuse. And again, it's a free country and People have the freedom to say yes or no, and people have the freedom to change their mind. Now, I care about this person. But it, 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 it confused me. And I didn't understand what happened. But then I'm thinking, could this be the reason why that I um, I'm not good enough anymore. I look at I I I'm see it. I feel almost like shamed. And I said, why why should I feel shame? What what did I do? I consider myself an individual with integrity, honesty. I'm upfront. Why am I feeling like I, like I committed the mortal sin against somebody? And so, I, my mind is racing. I'm very perceptive. I'm a very sensitive individual. And, and I'm sure many of you pick that up. I'm very sensitive. I'm a very sensitive soul. And, and I'm a very programmed soul. I was programmed to always want to make other people feel better, that, that it was my responsibility if someone else is upset or broken or whatever, that I have to fix the problem, you know? But yet I'm not supposed to have needs of my own and need someone to help me fix myself. You know, it's like I'm there for others. But it's no mutual reciprocity onto me. So I think about it and my mind is racing and, and I know it's like sometimes when you talk to people and then in, the com in a conversation there, there's, there's something happening energetically and, and that you can pick up that someone got upset or something happened and you may not say anything but you think, hey, maybe it's my imagination, or, oh, I, you know, I, I don't think I said anything. I didn't say any curse words or pejoratives, or whatever. I, I don't understand what happened, but I felt it. But I just kept on going. You know, we, you know, I was about to just get, you know, get off the phone anyhow, and then. Um, it, it, you know, it happened that um, I wasn't able to talk to this person. But I kept a mental note, and I contacted this person again. And in short, what was conveyed, Basically, what was conveyed was um, sorry, I have my dog in the background. Well, I sensed that the person 
was avoiding me. That's what I felt initially, I, um, an avoidance that I don't know what happened. Is this person hurt or did someone in their family get hurt? I don't know. But I sensed there was a, an avoidance. And I sent them a message, this person. Yet the person did not respond to me. Okay? I think it's almost like a two week gap. And I sent out a feeler out there to this person. And um, I, I'm trying to, you know, find out, you know, hey, what's going on? You know, hey, you know, how's everything? But nothing. And so I, 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 I felt for myself, so I'm just looking at the message of the person, because I know something's up. But I'm remembering when I had to get off the phone with this individual at what was said. I know that someone, that they got upset about something, but I don't know. And they won't tell me, and I feel they're avoiding me. And this individual had done other discussions with other individuals. And they didn't seem like upset about anything. So I don't think it was a trauma or something that happened. It's not like someone got hurt in their family. Everything seems copacetic. So why am I being, uh, what, what makes me feel avoid, you know, to be ignored or shunned? So I felt that I needed to say that uh, I, I thought we were to do, you know, I, I would like to have a discussion with you and uh, to be live on uh, YouTube. And, you know, just as before. I, I also complimented them on the, the, the work that they did in those two weeks that I haven't seen this person. So I'm letting them know. And it was said to me before that they were to speak to other people. I knew that because they had told me. And I'm letting them know that, yes, I... I saw your work. The work was done very well. But I let them know that, hey, you know, I, um, that my, my channel, I'm just trying to get my thoughts together. How'd it go? Like, I, I felt like shamed. And I said, you know, I, I'm not ashamed of my work. And I let them know that my channel has been around for a while. My cha this, this channel, Spirit Journey, has been around since 2014. 2014. And I have over 1,000 videos, lengthy videos on my channel. I have a modest subscribership, but an honest subscribership on my channel. An honest. Every little one I, I, I you know, I've earned. And I've, I have shared with you guys who's been following my channel that YouTube had um, done things to prevent subscribership or, or uh, what do you call, um, made it so that my subscribers don't get my, my, my videos. I've had people contact me and said, hey, um, I haven't been getting your videos and I, I was thinking of you and so I just typed in manually the name of your channel, Spirit Journey. And I, I see that you're still on. So I made a video and I showed the YouTuber who contacted me their comment 
and that they were being pulled. They weren't getting notification anymore on my channel. So they were preventing, YouTube was preventing, or some entity has been intercepting my videos to be heard by others, by my subscribers. So that, that force is there to limit my exposure and therefore limiting, excuse me, li limiting my um, ability um, for monetization. They also affected the monetization. They're saying on my, ch on my channel that uh, not suitable for most advertisers so they're affecting me, excuse me, they're affecting me of livelihood to be heard and monetization. And so I feel like, hey, let, let, me, let me speak on my behalf. So, okay, I have my channel since 2014. Just th this particular channel, I have other channels, but this one has been active since 2014 and I have over 1,000 videos. And so even though my subscribership is about, is a little over 4,500, and again, I already mentioned that some of my subscribers are being pulled and not, not being heard, and I document this, and I did a video on that knowledge. So I'm not just saying is what I feel, I'm sure giving evidence of what was what the subscriber shared with me. And that it's 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 limited. Why is this why why is my channel struggling? I have good content. Uh, I talk about different subjects, but again it is what it is. But these are variables, and an important variable, when you're being prevented to be heard by others, when your subscribers are not getting your videos, then they cannot share your videos with their friends, right, or their family or whatever. So it is oppressing. It's a judgment call. And so this person that I had talked to recently, uh, I reminded them that, yeah, I've been around since 2014. I have over 1,100 videos. And that, what else here? That, you know, may, maybe I don't, I, I haven't interviewed a lot of people. Yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a professional interviewer. I'm a, just a layman. I'm just a regular YouTuber. And I'm proud of my work. And you know, most YouTubers don't have as many content that I have. And so, I also share that I care about people. And I cared about what that person as an individual went through. And letting them know that, um, you know, if they in the future want to discuss, you know, talk to me, you know, I'm, I'm here. Yeah, I, I, I believe in giving honor. I feel that I honored this person. I was very respectful. But now I'm feeling disrespected. And I'm feeling disrespect because now I'm not... They make me feel like I'm not good enough to talk to because I, uh, I, I, I'm not a big interviewer. Well, they knew my status. I knew I was taking a chance to talk to this person almost two years ago. And I told them up front who I was. I even told them to watch my channel because people should know before you do an interview with someone, you should know who they are.
what type of content they have out there. So again, about disclosure. And it was no biggie to do a discussion on them live on YouTube. Right? It was no biggie. They asked about, hey, is this is, 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 is going to be live? I said, yes. Person said, okay. And it was very successful. It was a successful interview, discussion. And it was a lot of fun for me. So now, it's an issue. So I looked at the person, you know, the, the interviews that they did during this um, th this this time. And I look at the other person's channel. Now, again, this is not a put down on this other channel. It's a very nice channel. Very, very nicely set up. Very nice. Very nice, very professional. And they've been around since 2017. June, 20, June 2017. Okay? Now my channel, my, my, my active one that I use a lot, my main channel, Spirit Journey, has been around since 2014. Okay? So this person is going to do an interview with someone who is more of a newbie, okay, 2017 versus 2014, and I counted how many videos they have. They have roughly 140 videos, well, about 140 videos. I have over 1,100. I'm not a mathematician, but you do the math how many times more videos that I have than they. I have longevity, and I have quantity of, of content. But I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm being judged because I'm not good enough. Why, why aren't I good enough? Okay, they, they, they spoke to this, these people twice already. And I sense they avoided me. And, and I thank a viewer out there who told me about it. Because, see, I, I knew the person was going to have a video out. Because they told me they were going to have one out. And I, I tried to look for it online, but I couldn't find it. Well, just out of the blue, someone notified me. I, I've never, I, I don't know who they are. I've, I've never seen them. I, I didn't recognize their name, their channel name. And they told me about it. So I, I checked it out. They had given me a link and I checked it out. I said, wow. It was good. It was good work. There's no criticism about them. It was good. But what this, this, this uh, audio is really about is how it left me feeling. Feeling as an individual uh, that like, like I'm, I'm thrown aside, like garbage. I gave this person utmost respect, utmost respect, because I like this person. I like this person, but I don't like how I feel now. Now, so this person, I feel, made a judgment call to get a newbie, a relatively new channel, with a fraction amount of content than mine, to display their um, topic. So I, I start thinking about 
how what what what's the significance of something like this? And and this is the this is what it's going to be about. See what this is reminding me is that as a black person, as a black woman, how are black people viewed in this country? I remember growing up, my father, who's now deceased now for 10 years, he had shared this thing with the, with the family. He said his own mother said that you have to be better in this country. She was an immigrant. Well, she, she's an immigrant, but not an immigrant, this grandmother of mine. Yes, she's born outside of the, she, she was not born under the American flag, but the United States of America acquired the island that she was living on at the time, and that Anyone on that island who salutes the flag will become U.S. citizens. And so when she entered the U.S. mainland, she came in as a U.S. citizen. Okay? And so she told my father that in this country, you have to be better. You have to be the best. To, to get ahead. And so he, he, he studied hard and he was the top in his, pretty much the top in his, his talents. And they even tried to squash him. So it was even, so even though he was the best, they didn't want him to be the best. And they wanted to promote somebody else. So I feel like what's happening with me, a similar theme, that I'm not given the chance to really shine because people don't want me to shine too much on YouTube. And it seems like now that people that want to, that you want to talk to or they want to talk to you, that now it's a, it's, it makes a difference now and that they want to distance themselves from you for whatever reason, even though I, I haven't done anything to them. And so I'm, again, reminded with what my father said about you have to be the best. And so I guess being the best to be accepted by some people, you have to have all these bling bling, all these things to prove yourself worthy enough for a crumb. They may initially tag along on you so for, for their advancement, and then they turn their back on you or make excuses like, oh, uh, it's going to be live. I didn't know about it being a live showing. Well, it was live before, and they've done um, live conferences. So it wasn't that they were being shy, that they were shy all of a sudden. They, they've public, you know, done public speaking. They've done public speaking, many interviews, discussions with all types of people. But all of a sudden, uh, there's an issue with me. So again, that is telling me you, you, you're, not, you're not popular enough now for me to talk to you. Or maybe I'm not white enough. So some people are willing to talk to some people. And again, this fellow YouTuber whose work looks very nice, but a relative newbie, a fraction of, most, uh, a fraction of content, 
in comparison to mine, yet they're given the respect for discussion, but not me. Why? So I'm thinking about, you know, this time. I, I, um, I, I'm, I'm thinking about seeing this person. I, I saw this person's uh, website. She's, I'm not going to mention the name of this individual other than that she's a black woman. They have a management background. Uh, they look very, very polished in their presentation. I, I know, see, I've opened a business before, an LLC. See, in this country, and I imagine <laughs> elsewhere too, you know, to, to start a legitimate business, whether it be a, uh, an Inc. or LLC or all the other business entities, it takes time and money and planning and also approval by uh, government officials to give you that, uh, that status or even to open up a bank account. If you took, let's say you want to open up a vendor's account, a, a business account at a, at a bank. You need documentations from that agency to give that that is a bona fide company, whether it be an Inc. or LLC. Now, I had an LLC. And I had, all, I had to present all that paperwork to present to the bank for them to grant me a bona fide business checking, business savings account. I had also purchased the top of the line equipment of the business I thought I wanted to, that, that I wanted to open up in, uh, uh, in, in nutritional counseling. The best, the, the best software in my, as, a, as tools to give excellent service to the clients that I wanted to uh, service. Okay? It takes time and a lot of money. Then I also had to advertise in the newspaper. That's a lot of money. I couldn't believe how many thousands. When we, when we look at a, a newspaper, an advertisement, just a small little one in the thousands of dollars. I had no idea it was going to be that much money. Yeah. So I look at this, you, I'm sorry, not YouTuber, but um, this individual, this businesswoman. She has a Facebook. She does have a YouTube channel. And I can see that she, as a black woman, uh, she, she seems like someone who who knows as a black woman, she has to present herself spotless. Her hair has to be impeccable. Her makeup has to be impeccable. She has to dress, overdress sometimes. Her office, boom, she went. She's going all out. So I know firsthand that for her to have the type of website that she has, and I also had a website, I did my website on my own by scratch. I got the template and then I went on YouTube to find out how to navigate and create a website using that as a template and instructional uh, as instruction. And then I, I built my own website. Okay. So I know this lady, if she, if she didn't do it on her own, she had to pay someone good money to get that. Um, website done. And I notice also when people deal with black people, and especially black women, that, you know, you have to, you, you charge them more, they charge us more money. A black woman that comes in for the same service as other people, 
they charge that black woman more money than the general population. Okay? So when I was watching her, you know, look, uh, reviewing her, her website and, and videos on YouTube, that's what's going on in my mind. It's racing. And, and I have anger because I know, I know what this lady is probably going through. That she had to pre present herself that much better. And I know it took a lot of money. Okay? And then you have all these other people, uh, mainstream society. And it looks like, it looks, it just, the appearance that it takes them less effort, but you get more. So they do less, get more, while if you're a black woman, American woman, you have to work that much harder to get a crumb. And, and, that, and that's what I'm feeling right now, that anger, resentment. And, and, and I'm, I don't want to take it out on this innocent person, but this is the thought to go in my head. That why does she have to work 10 times harder to, be, to get a crumb? And it's not that much... Um, what do you call it? It's not that many viewers of her, her channel. It's professionally done. It's easy to navigate her, her website. But it's not a lot of traffic. That's all traffic. It's not heavily trafficked. Her YouTube channel is not heavily trafficked. And I know she's working her, her butt off. And you get these fly-by-nights that come on social media of, of whatever kind, newbies, and boom, popularville. Minimum effort, but maximum output. That, I, I wish they could tell me their secrets, okay? Now again, when I, when I came on YouTube, I didn't know about the monetization. I did not know about subscribers. I didn't know what the like and the, the thumbs up or the thumbs down button was. I didn't know anything about that. I didn't know what they were. I was real new and green uh, and just kind of just going along, you know? So, I, I, so it's not my, my motivation wasn't one of materialism. My motivation was to be heard because I was in... Um, I was concerned about certain social things that were happening to me. And I, I felt like I had to, I, I needed to wake up. I was starting to come to an awakening about what is reality, what's going on. And so I called it spirit journey. Okay. And then I found another black woman. They're in uh, similar occupations as this first black woman that I was referring to. And this is a black woman from overseas. She was a lawyer. And she changed careers. And again, I look at her channel, minimum views, minimum exposure, minimal traffic. She has a nice website. It's just straightforward. And again, I, I, I knew that she had to put effort in getting that done. Now, I feel that the, the woman from Europe, the black woman from Europe, her, 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 her content seemed a little bit more, in some instances, uh, um, it didn't my, my perception that it, it that she didn't have to sweat as hard for what she was, but I feel the one in the United States had to sweat her her you know what off to just have what she has. But either way, both women were professional ladies and are professional women, and despite their. Um, their, 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 what, what they show, what, how, what, the, the content, it seems to be strained. And I ask myself, why? 
Why is it that black women, whether you're a black woman, a woman in the United States, or a black woman from Europe, why is it that our traffic, we, we're not heavily trafficked? It's like we have to put so much energy in what we do to be heard or to be taken seriously. And that's also what I pick up that people look at us and they wonder, should we trust them? Should we go to them? See, this is also what I realize, what, I, what I'm picking up. See, black women in general, how are we perceived? Well, we just look at the media. Black women you see as, let's say on, in the movies, they view us as uh, prostitutes and drug addicts, right? That, that's the bulk of uh, Hollywood with the black woman. But now they're showing other things. They have now uh, a lawyer, the, the, the lady that does the paternity thing, she's a lawyer. You may have some movies, they, 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 they show black women in, in government, but you never see the black woman, a successful black woman, with her black husband or a family of her own with a man, woman, and child. They don't show that. Or they may show her as a so-called spiritual lady, but she's there for, to always help other people but not her own people or herself. She has to help other people. She can help white people achieve and, and be the therapist for other people, but not her own people. So when we are presented outside of the stereotype images, we're hesitant. Hey, wait a minute, that's a professor, that's a businesswoman? Oh, but she's black. Oh, they're not supposed to be business ladies. They're not supposed to be professional. She's, she's our equal? No, she's not. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Well. So we, we're brainwashed to think that black women aren't mature, prof professional, mature-minded, we don't fit the stereotype, so we don't know how to approach her. Oh, well, you have to be vouched for. See, that's what I'm seeing also now, what's happening. That in order to be a really successful person, and if you're not a mainstreamer, I'm, I'm being very tactful, you have to be invited into those other people's arena. You have to be invited in to be accepted and then to be utilized and receive the full, full blessings of the work you produce. Like if you put in a seed, you get a plant, you get a harvest. See, so there's minimal blockage, if you understand what I mean. So if you're not, if you're not approved by them, then it, you are restricted how much you can make, where you can live, who will buy from you. If you're not one of the mainstreamers, if they don't invite you in, they're not going to want to buy from you unless there's something. They don't mind watching you sing, watching you dance, or doing illicit activities from us. Need I say that anymore? You know what I'm getting at. Okay? But soon when we get into a position of... of polish or positions that's usually maybe dominated by men, business person, okay, uh, a mainstream white person, right? No one thinks about asking about their credentials or anything, but soon when you are an American black woman, all of a sudden you have to prove everything to be accepted, all these credentials. But you have other people from other communities, they don't have to show any proof whatsoever. And we have to just take whatever they say with carte blanche. 
and it can move up. You have people that might approach me and they want me to help them. But they never lift a finger to help me. And so, what happened? You have someone, a newbie, and with a fraction of, of the amount of content, and then I'm shamed. At least the outcome, I feel like, like, they, like I'm shamed, or to, to, like there's something wrong with me now. Like now, I'm not good enough. Why should I feel this way? You have to be that much better than other people. But even still, when, that, when you are better, it doesn't guarantee a thing. And it could um, be used against you. I've mentioned this story before. I used to live in Hawaii, and I thought that was part of the United States of America. What is it? What is it? The 50th state? I lived in Maui, and I have a certificate in pastry arts. I did graduate with honors, and then um, I got blacklisted in New York City. So I go to Hawaii, hopes to start a new life there, because I just had to, you know, I was in a survival mode, and I had to sacrifice a lot to move there. So I arrive, and I landed a job in the cooking field, and I even got a second job because I was so in debt from relocating to Maui. And then I lose them both within a week apart of each other, begged the second, go the second job. I begged them, I said, uh, please, I, I, I just got this, uh, this car just to get to this job. I, I need a job. I begged them, and the person was very indifferent, very hostile expression on his face, and I couldn't get the job, keep the job. And so I learned about that there are city jobs, and you can work in the school system. So I found out about, this could have been in 19, yeah, um, sometime in 99, I think, 1999. I take the state exam for school baker or something like that. And then I find out that I passed the test. I get something in the mail that I passed. So I'm all excited. And working in the school system, I thought, hey, great, you know, um, it's a union and, and I should be able, you know, it's, it's a walking distance where I was living, I think, at the time. And so I went and I cut, there were, there were five schools, uh, positions that were open. So I applied to the one that's nearby, where I lived at the time. And this was some experience. There was a woman and a man, a white man, the lady, some type of, Pacific Island, Pacific Asian mix of some type. And she looked at me with disgust, I remember. And I remember how easy I, uneasy I felt. And she says, well, you have to take the test over again. Now I took a state exam, the state of Hawaii. And then um, he hands me a, you know, one of them hand me a, a test. They had me sit in a chair, and the two of them sitting maybe uh, three feet away from me looking at me. 
And I did the test, completed it, they graded it, and I passed that. Of course I passed it. But it seemed like that they were uh, implying that maybe I cheated on the exam and wanted to see how I score and be retested. So, I passed. And then they said, well, we'll get in contact with you. The, the woman of color said that to me. Oh, also, almost forgot. Uh, it could have been, uh, I think, before I actually took the test. I, I forget which one came first. But at one point in the interview, the white guy, who's an older guy, he has a cup of pencils, pencils in a cup, and he drops it over my head. And then he bends down to pick up the pencils and then looking up my dress. I kid you not. This was humiliating, but I kept my bearing, folks. Yes, I did. I kept my bearing, my professional bearing. And then at the end of the interview, oh, we'll contact you. So she contacted me, all right, and this is what she said. I'm sorry, we can't hire you. We decided to hire someone else who's more, profe who, who's more experienced or more professional, no, more experienced than you, no, uh, that has more experience than you. Well, anyway, um, you're overqualified. And hung up. And she was really hostile. So I um, contacted, oh, uh, how did it go? Oh, I contacted the director of the school. It was a woman. And I told her what happened to me and that I was denied the position and that I was the only one on the list that qualified to be interviewed for the exam and why someone else was hired for the exam but they weren't on the list. And then they said, oh, that can't be because uh, uh, that, that you weren't the only one on the list because I made sure I put this other person I know on the list. Okay, so they're doing favors. Yes, yeah, she could have put someone on the list. She could put 100 people on the list, but I was the only one that passed, and that's why I'm the only one that was on that list. She could put anybody on the list for hire, but I'm the only one that passed in the state of Hawaii. And so I said, well, I, I really need a job and blah, 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 and I like to be considered for one of the uh, four remaining job positions that are available. So I, I actually did contact a second person. This was a high school. And the, the guy never met me. And I said, uh, hi, my name is so-and-so, and, -so, and uh, I'd like to know if the position is still, still available. He says, yeah, I, I need someone real bad. Hey, are you able to uh, work right away? I said, yeah. He said, I need someone right away. And then he went to do the paperwork. And then when I get back to him or he got back to me, his tone turned. Oh, well, uh, I, I, oh, I can't hire anyone right now. Uh, you know, uh, I shouldn't have told you that you were the only person on the list. And uh, he was getting cold feet. So evidently, when he called in uh, to, to hire me, he wanted to hire me. His higher-ups told them, no, not to hire me. And so um, he, he made some excuse, you know, that he couldn't, you know, his hands are tied, he can't do anything, which was truthful. So I'll go back to the director, you know, called them up and said, you know, uh, he's not able to uh, hire me, but, you know, I really want to work. And then, then she responds, well, we can't hire anybody right now because we don't know how many children we're feeding. 
And until we know how many children we're feeding, we'll, we'll know uh, wh when we can hire you. And so I said, oh, okay. And so I remember that it was the holidays coming, uh, the Christmas season. Yeah, so this had to be then uh, 99, uh, you know, around November, December. And so then I called uh, after the holidays, I think it was, or just before the, the, it actually came. Oh, we still don't know how many people we're feeding right now. I said, wow, how long is it going to take you to find out how many children you, you got to feed? He said, well, well, we'll know in a couple of months. So I'm calling, calling periodically, and I was never called or considered. And so when I moved out of Hawaii, I was thinking about my experience there. And so what I did, I contacted Hawaii, the, the state board uh, who, who gives the exam. I said, the, the Baker's exam, I, I said, I would like to uh, get a list of, uh, I said, I don't remember exactly what, what year it was, but it's between this year and that year. And uh, how many people passed and how many positions were placed. Or oh, we don't issue out, we didn't issue out that exam. I said, yeah, there was a, it's called the, the Baker's, uh, uh, the school Baker exam or something like that. Of course they know what exam is out there. The small place, you know what exams that you that the state issues. And then finally I get something in the mail indicating the number of passes, a fail, whatever, and what was placed. Well, during my time there in Hawaii, they place those those uh, positions and did not uh, have me be considered for any of them. So it seems like there's an open season to bar black people, male or female, in America from uh, achieving. Their, the, the fruits of their labor. I paid a lot of money for this uh, baking school. I am a veteran. And even with all that, I wasn't uh, welcome to uh, get employed in the state of Hawaii, in the school system. But yet you have people from all over the world who use you for help, use you to move up the ladder, but do nothing to help you. And I've helped people when I was out there, but I noticed that it's never really, um, it's never really uh, appreciated or I should say reciprocated. That's what I really want to say, reciprocated. But you're there to help others but they, they have a natural hatred and jealousy for black people who want to move up the ladder, who just want the basics. And I was denied that. And that's being the number one person in Hawaii for the state exam for Baker. I was the only one that passed that exam. And so that's why I was the only one on the list. And yet, being the best is not enough in America because they don't want you to succeed and they don't want you to have community. And so that's what I want to share with all this. I'm also reminded the whole theme about how some people in this country, how they want to treat, how they really feel about people of color, about black people. I recently, recently watched, went to the movies to see Gemini Man. I was referred to see this movie by 
uh, a YouTube video that made mention about the movie. Video was about the again the the genre of the MK Ultra type of stuff. And so I, I say, oh, let me check this out. So I saw the preview over the internet. I said, I'm going to see this movie. So now this, this portion of this audio is going to be about Gemini Man. This movie came out in, let's see, what month? It came out recent. I think it came out in uh, September. Okay. And... It's a drama thriller. It's one hour and 57 minutes long, and it stars Will Smith. And this movie is really interesting on many, many levels. And I want to discuss that, about the message that this type of movie, this movie shares. Well, Gemini Man is about it, it stars a, a black man, and he's coming of that seasonable age. He is 50 years old, 50, 51 years old, it's said in the movie. And he's a hard, hired um, killer. He's hired by the government. And one of his last um, assignments was to take out this person. And he did, he did take out that person, but there was a potential um, error that he could have, if he was, he said, six inches off, he could have killed the wrong person. Luckily, he got that person, but, he, but the person that he could have, potentially killed was an in, innocent little child. But it, it rubbed him. It, it started to affect him. And he felt at that point, that's his last job he's going to do. So he announces that he's going to retire. Well, okay, him being a black guy. See, what, what I'm learning that, see, black people don't have the right to say, I'm finished and I'm going to retire. Not when you're working for the majority. That when the majority tells you you're, you're done, then you're done. But they didn't like that he said that he wants to retire. Even though he gave excellent, excellent service. And it turned out that he, too, is the top. Him being the top in his field was exploited and that they did they were they became angry at him and you know what they did in the movie they set out to kill him because he wanted to retire i kid you not and you know what else see this is all saying something it's, it's all the same theme when i'm discussing here what happened to me, what my, my feelings about what, what I'm sharing with you and about those two black women that they have to be that much better to just get a little attention. Well, same thing with this black man in the movie. You know, he's only playing a part, but it's, but it's really telling. See, yes, he, he, he's, he's a good-looking guy. He's... He, speaks very well, and he has very good manners, you know, yes ma'am, no ma'am, thank you, all that, just like me. See, we broke program to speak all nice and proper when you're dealing with the mainstream society, okay? Even though he's a, a, a person that is a hired um, assassiner. Okay, and so it turns out that the, 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 the amount of hatred that they have for this guy, Gemini Man, <laughs> the character in this movie, 
um, the main character in the movie, that they, they tried to whack him with other people. But he alluded, see, see, he's that smart as a man. He's a smart thinker. He thinks ahead. And he's been working for this agency, I think, 25 years or more. He entered the military. And then in the military, they recruited him to do work, you know, like what they call paramilitary. And he had a very successful career. But that's not enough. And he's being burnt out. And also, he's not married. And I think those other, uh, uh, at least one of the women that I mentioned, the professional, she's not married e either. And no kids. A lot of professional black women do not have relationships. They're not married. They don't have kids. The same as this man. No, no wife, no girlfriend, no children. Just work, 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 work. Okay? They tried to uh, whack him off. But he was one step ahead. Okay? And he was able to out this person who was to be a spy, to spy over him. And they made, they used the white female. And, but he was perceptive. He said, hey, where's so-and-so? Oh, um, they're, they're out today, you know. But it just something didn't sit right with them. See, he, see again, he, he, he's programmed also, this guy. And then uh, things started happening. Well, again, I'm not going to go all in detail, but the, the, the main essence it turned out, see, this guy is so good at what he does and that the agencies in the U.S. don't like that he wants, that he's controlling his destiny, and then they hide someone to get rid of him. And it turns out that other person that wanted to get rid of him, I mean, the, the, the person that they used to get rid of him, guess this get this, was a clone of his. See, without him, his knowledge, his uh, higher-ups had taken a blood sample from him. See, they thought, hey, he's so good, it must be something genetic. Well, let's copy it and make a clone of him, and so when he wants to leave or whatever, we got these clones. And what more? Let's get his clone to get rid of him. Well, one day he meets his clone who was trying to kill him. And he doesn't want to kill the guy. He's, he really, that, wow, that person looks just like me. And he finds out that that's actually his clone. They get in a fight, and one of the people that was there to help him, this the lady, was able to get a DNA sample from the uh, person the, the person tried to harm him because he had gotten injured and uh, she took a, the, 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 he had, I think, a piece of his hat or something and had his DNA and blood on the hat because he got injured in the chase. So she hired some, you know, paid someone to check, you know, to find who this person is. And it was an identical DNA as the guy, you know, Gemini man. So they realized, hey, this is a clone that they used of him. And so what, what does all this mean? Well, it, well, there's a dialogue between the two. They were fighting. And it was a great fight they had. It was one of the best chase scenes, fights. It was fantastic. What does that signify? fighting. I started thinking, what's the significance of that? Well, you have, it turns out that, the, that one of the higher ups, the person that took the DNA sample, the blood sample, had taken the blood, you know, did, did the clone outside of his, his knowledge. 
and he lied to the clone, raised him as an orphan. He said, you're an orphan. You don't have parents. I'll take care of you. I love you. He kept saying that. Oh, I love you. I love you. Well, it turns out, I don't know how you can call what happened to the clone as love. Because he, he was lied to. He was lied about his identity. He said, I'll be your father. But what did this father do to this clone? Prevented him to have relationships. He could, he, no girlfriend, no sexual experience, uh, no marriage, no friends. Just be a, a, um, someone who assassinates p people. And in fact, the biggest betrayer is to have him take out his, uh, his, his source of his genetics, the Will Smith, Will Smith character. Isn't that something? You call that love? It's like telling someone, oh, go uh, whack your own family. It's equivalent, but even closer because all his genetics are tied with this uh, clone, right? But this is supposed to be love. And so they so, show a scene of the, the government guy hugging the clone and the, the tears that's in his face of the, of the clone. And the white guy is saying, oh, I love you. Oh, and it, it just said, what, what did this remind me of? There's, ex, there's a, an expression, the white man's burden. The white man's burden is about that black people, and I think black men in particular, are the responsibility of the white men to resolve. That's white man, it's his burden to fix the problem. Not that he caused the problem, but to fix the problem of the black man and the black community overall. He lied to you. He'll say, I love you, or I'm doing this for you. But in actuality, he's setting you up for failure and to kill your own. That's what I got out of this movie, Gemini Man, with Will Smith. That they don't use white people directly to kill you. They get your own to kill you. And in this movie, his clone. They want you, black man and woman, to kill yourself. That's what that means. We're not going to kill you directly. We're going to have you kill yourself. How do, they, how do you do that? Drugs. Uh, AIDS. Black on black crime. Right? Chicago. Detroit, L.A., black-on-black black crime, black men killing other black men, radical. And you don't know why, but you notice the white guy wasn't being killed. Why are we turning our anger against our own and not on the person that's doing the harassment. That's doing the oppression. That, this movie clearly showed the wickedness of the government official to fool you that they're really your friend and that they love you. And it's, it was a patronizing. That's also another thing I know. It was a patronizing that he, he hugged the clone. The clone is uh, supposed to be the age 23. And it's like, oh, I love you. No one loved you before. I had to do all this for you. Doesn't that sound familiar, folks? Like you're a boy. This movie is showing that black people are the child of the white man. And he has to protect you. 
it's, it's another form of slavery. That clone represents slavehood, lack of freedom. That man had no freedom to leave and do his thing. None whatsoever. He was actually served as property for that government official. And when the character Will Smith, the older, you know, the, the man, not the clone, when he decided, you know, I'm tired, I want to do other things, I'm 50 years old, I want to do other things, I have other interests, the white man got angry and said, we're going to kill him. He thinks he's free. He's not free. You're not free. And we're going to remind you that you're not free. You're not a private agent. And we're going to get rid of you. But we're going to get rid of you sneakily. We're going to get your own people to kill you. And so that's what happened. But luckily, Will Smith comes to his senses and tells his clone, look, I'm trying to save you. And he shared to, to prove his identity. He told him about himself, about what he's probably living through, his, his, the, the traumas, the fears, his idiosyncrasies, all that. He let it known up front, this is probably what you're going through, what you're experiencing. I know because I went through it. It was really profound. See, we're in a sleep. So this movie is also depicting that, that the clone is asleep. The black community, the black man is asleep. He doesn't know himself. He's, he's being lulled by modern day white man or the system that they're your friend. They're making... Uh, doing things for you, but in actuality, he's serving himself. He's telling the clone, hey, oh, kill these people. Do this and that to these people because they're, they're bad people. Well, if this guy really loved the clone, wouldn't he say, you know? Yeah, because the excuse was, well, the, the, the adult fellow, uh, he had a broken home. You know, his father, uh, you know, all these things. You know, um, no one loves you. And we, we just wanted to prevent you to having bad emotions and be traumatized. You know, we're just trying to protect you, your emotions. You know, so we make you uh, to have no emotions, no feelings. And you, you do, you know, your assignments. And, and then when you're done, you know, you, you could go off and you won't have PTSD and all these things. So they're making it on the service. They're doing you a favor. We're doing you a favor with welfare. You know, so, you know, we keep the family separate. We're doing you a favor. Okay, you don't have any property, but that's okay. We'll take care of you. We give you uh, uh, public assistance. We give you free medical care at the clinic. Oh, you can even fight for us in the military. Yeah, you get free room and board. But in the meanwhile, this leader, this uh, government official, I'm sure he has girlfriends or wives or children. He has sex what he wants when he wants to. He has money. He has the freedom to come and go. He has the freedoms for retiring, if he feels like retiring. See, this is modern day slavery. But it's disguised because he, he knows how to fight good, he knows how to use weapons, he looks cool and all that. But he, the system is letting you know you are his slave. And when we're done with you, then you can leave. But other than that, you have no uh, authority to make that decision. The clone couldn't make decisions for himself. So it was a slave. But the slave does not have physical chains. And yet the slave has his, knows how to ride a bike. He got some cool looking clothes and, you know, but, but there's no relationships. 
neither character has any girlfriend or wife or anything. You're on a plantation and you're only given what they want to give you. You get your what they call slave rations. And then we're supposed to say thank you, master, when we get something, when we get a crumb. These people never got anything. We have to fight their wars. We have to do their assignments. And in the process, they get rich. And we, we wind it up with trauma. They didn't realize how traumatized they really were. Oh, no. No, they would, the old one did know. The second one was just numb. But when he realized, when he started waking up, that he was lied to, that he was a clone, that they sent him to kill himself. <laughs> See that? They want you to kill yourself. And they're being sneaky about it. Sending people, white women, to watch you, to analyze you, to set you up. The white woman in the movie was placed there deliberately to spy on him. But in the movie, they targeted her as well because she knew too much information. But basically, basic was really happening that she was still a spy. And she'll probably still be a, a spy and watching over you, but pretending now. Now they try to make it look like that, almost like she's the, 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 the girlfriend now of this person that was placed there actually to spy on him and I'm sure eventually to kill him because that's what they wanted to do in the first place. So again, they distract you again. They make you think like this woman outside of your group is your friend now. No. If they weren't a friend to start out with, they're not going to be your friend because now the system wants to get her too. It's just collateral damage. The whole thing is about control, controlling the narrative, controlling your life, your freedom, your enterprise. What if he wanted to go get, start his own um, investment firm, you know, um, being a, a private PI, or maybe uh, be a teacher to teach people how to do the type of work he's doing. I, I doubt it. Right? Be very careful what's being handed to you, because what's being handed to you may be a trap. And again, being 10 times better isn't enough because, again, the character in Gemini Man, he was the best of the best, and they don't like that. And they had a backup, and they used his clone to get rid of him, to manipulate. Because, again, the slave might get unruly one day. Oh, can we just pop him off? And look at those two black women I talked to you about, struggling. Um, relationships, children, it's, it's being withheld from us. But you have other groups who can have businesses, but they have family. They're married, children. That doesn't stop, but somehow in our community, for us to succeed, even when we are the best, we are being hindered. The full participation of enterprise, of earning money, and then we criticize when, we, when we're poor. That's the essence of what I'm getting at. It's modern day slavery, but it's just disguised. So you, it, it doesn't require having chains, but it's a mental thing. And they're doing it through Hollywood perpetuating the stereotype, the program, the mental program. We got to break the program. Start loving yourself. 
Gemini man learned to, at the end to love himself. He came to an awakening. Okay? It's many aspects of that movie. Many as aspects that you can dissect it. The end was really profound. It was really interesting. <laughs> but look, you are valuable, black man and black woman. You need to learn to come together, to help one another, and self-love. You have to. Being the best is not enough in their eyes. Being my best, in comparison, I, my, my channel is older than the other YouTuber. They have a fraction of the number of content slash videos than my channel. And yet, that person, by their response to me, that I'm no longer acceptable to be uh, uh, talked to, even though I talked to them before, I gave them respect, but that wasn't enough. So it's just an eye-opener that racism slash sexism still occurs. It may be conscious or subconscious, but the results are still the same, that they don't value you and they don't want you only when they have an agenda that includes you. So this is just food for thought and a lot of thought about that. So really listen and analyze and try to understand where I'm coming from and that the arena today on social media is being socially constructed to, again, promote or demote certain videos, certain topics, and certain outcomes. I thank you in advance for watching, for listening, and those of you who like my content and want to promote my channel that you may wish to PayPal me through a donation. You just go to my channel, Spirit Journey, and on the top right of the banner on my channel, you see the link, PayPal me. You just click on it and follow the prompts. Any amount would be appreciated. I thank you in advance for your gift to me, and I thank you for your comments below, and I thank you also for sharing this video with friends or family members. I thank you and have a wonderful Saturday evening. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.